Hello, hello, hello. I hope you can hear me. As, a, as a, it's always the case with these, technical difficulties got in the way. So today we're going to talk about mistakes and um, and how to destroy them. Um, uh, the first thing first, I'm going to put a few links in chat because I have a few things for you to watch. So first of all, um, you can find a, a brief <laughs> a brief PDF for uh, the the lesson here in my Dropbox account. Click on that link. It's called uh, the mistake live stream PDF, I believe. Um, just put in the comments if you can hear me okay, just to, just, just to make sure. Um, so there's that. There's also a really cool study which has been made available on researchgate.net. It's quite an old study. Um, it's called, it's not how much, it's how. Characteristics of practice behavior and retention of performance skills. So have a look at that. Oh, already done it. It's um, psych out. Well done. Well done. Um, I'm just going to take a brief minute to say hello to everyone. Hello, Jack. Good to see you again. Um, hello, psych out. Thank you for, for already having downloaded the materials, Eager Beaver. Hello, Potterhead. Um, shall I give, can I give away your, your secret identity, Potterhead? Let me know in the comments. Um, Cadworks. Um, hi, nice to see you online again. Hello. Um, Thanks for, for tuning in. Um, we got a nice small number of, of people here. I think four at the moment, well done. You guys, thank you. Um, this is Uma Shankar from India, Cowboy Works. Cool, nice to, uh, nice to meet you. Ah, oh, hey, fantastic. You got a, a merit in grade two. Nice, last week. Well done. Everyone say congratulations. Um, to cab works, fantastic work. Merit uh, is 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 yeah, well well done, well done. Um, and so Potterhead um, is Shraddha, who who had the grade eight lesson um, that you might have seen on my YouTube channel. Um, congratulations to her for gaining a distinction in grade eight. And um, I'd love to know what you're planning next. I know we have another um, uh, another YouTube lesson planned soon. So anyway, there are, there are the materials now. Um, it's worth, I think what I'll do, I'll just play through the kind of way that I imagine lots of people will practice. Um, most of my students kind of fall victim to one or more of the following errors. So I'm going to play a piece um, called Rosita. Hopefully this works. Yes, there we go. Um, Tariga piece, I just thought I'd choose that. I think someone wanted that the other day. Um, so... We kind of go into practice um, and it, in a way, believing that mistakes are kind of anomalies, that mistakes are strange occurrences that we have no idea why they happened and oh, if we'll just play it again, then maybe it'll be better. First mistake. Now, what you might happen, you might not even bother to kind of uh, stop and correct it. Or we go from the start again. Oh, okay, I made a mistake, let's go from the start. Hmm. I'm gonna try and replicate it again. Ah, oh, it's happened again. Back to the start we go on this merry-go-round. And there it is again. <laughs> now, was, that, was, that, was that planned or was that um, just me making a mistake? So, um, the, the, the PDF that you would have seen, um, I'll just bring that up in a second. Um, yeah, here it is. So, I think the best way we can deal with mistakes and learn, learn from them is to adopt the viewpoint that we choose to make mistakes. They are a conscious thing. They're not um, some weird thing that happens. We choose to make them in the way that we're playing. Um, it, it's it, Whether you agree or not, I think it's a really good viewpoint to adopt. So imagine that every mistake you make, you can fix. Um, and potentially stop it before it even happens. 
Bold pledge. Right, I'm going to play this again. Pressure is on. I'm going to play this without making a single mistake in that first line. That was okay. So notice I started off a lot slower. But also, when I came to the section that is causing me trouble, you slow down into it. Uh, also, I can't play and uh, talk at the same time. So, I'm going to jump ahead a bit with this, um, uh, this blurb I've given here. And the important part to remember is that, like, we we tend to not use tempo and length of whatever we're playing to our advantage. I like to like tell my students that we're all time lords, right? With the the two most useful weapons we have in practicing um, are are the speed and the length of, uh, of what we practice. Okay, so we, providing we, we have a good grasp of tempo and how to go slower, which is difficult in itself, we need to utilize that to ensure that the mistakes we make are minimal. Um, like, I'm not saying that mistakes are terrible things. They're actually very, very welcome. But once we make them, we've got to make damn sure we don't make them again. Um, and the best tool we have is slowing down. Um, I often ask my students, okay, play that again, but slower, and they'll play exactly the same tempo or faster, and they'll speed up into the error, and then um, they'll make the mistake again. The only mistake they're making there is they're not going slower. So, um, you know, uh, these, these rules I've got here. Once a mistake is made, stop immediately. Part of this too is not going ah oh, nuts and starting again and then doing the same thing again and then and then getting more and more wound up more and more kind of stressed about it. Um, uh, you know we need to leave the ego out of out of practice here. Uh, often like the what I used to think when I made a mistake was oh that's ridiculous oh it must be my my fingernails or oh um, my guitar isn't right or oh. This piece, that was a silly, silly piece. Um, you know, our ego likes to be defended when it gets hurt by us playing mistakes. So, like, we need to, I think, be be silent, be present, and almost like have no judgment on what we're doing. Okay, we can't we, we can't react immediately. Um, a lot of the time, reacting like that, as I said, is a defense mechanism. So. You stop immediately. You be silent. You don't react, and you, and and again, think think to yourself. You let that mistake happen, um, and now you can fix it. So we isolate the mistake. So in in terms of this piece, um, my mistake was overextending here for some reason, right? Now, why is that? I don't know. I think. No idea really. Hopefully, repeating whatever that phrase is will 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 reveal to me what the mistake, what, what the problem might be. There might be something quite inherent in my playing that's causing me to do that. So we isolate it. We find um, the the exact kind of amount of notes that will help us play without mistakes, and then we apply what I call the eighty twenty rule. Um, the eighty twenty rule. Is actually there's another rule. I, I nick this, nick the name, but not the rule. And the eighty twenty rule is this idea. I think that um, eighty percent of the gains you make in practice or anything is down to twenty percent of what you do. So there's you know twenty percent of your activity, like practice, is is really really beneficial. And the idea behind that rule is that you focus on that twenty percent, the really beneficial um, bits. A bit like this. This could be that that twenty percent. This rule of not making mistakes. 
But for me, the um, this 80-20 rule is about once we made the mistake, we repeat however many times, five times, ten times, a hundred times. But in those repeats, we make sure that out of, say, five repetitions, four are completely correct and to our liking, and one is um, has a mistake in, at, 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 you know, at the most. Um, so if you play it 10 times, you want eight correct repetitions. If you play it 20 times, you want 16, <laughs> maths, 16 correct repetitions, right? And, and don't go on until that is the case. So we play um, that phrase again. Maybe let's let's see where I isolate it from. I think perhaps the first isolation would be this. Okay. Oops, can't see that. Um, okay. So right at the end of the line there, that phrase, the C sharp. point here we can either choose to play faster in which case I love to have a pause between each um, each repetition so I can I can um, you know relax and not get stressed You can also increase the length of the phrase. You can expand the phrase out, maybe to have a few notes before or a few notes after or both. So let's go from the A in the previous bar. Now you'll find this is like, this is the what I call the length slider on the PDF. So you have temp, the tempo slider going from slow to fast and you have the length slider going from very few notes to loads of notes. And these two sliders, these two weapons that we have to, to, to kill our mistakes, um, they interact with each other. So if you're playing a fast phrase, you take a very little chunk. If you're playing it slower, you can gradually increase to have more notes. You, you can't often increase speed and increase length at the same time. Okay? Um, so, uh, mm, it's too fast. we go. Second time, three more to go. And you know, there we go, we've got there um, five times or more played correct. Now let's try and expand it out the other way. Again, because I'm now have, adding more notes, I have to go um, slower again. There's why I made the mistake from before. We've got an extended position here between the A and the C sharp. So I was, in my mind, something had triggered saying, oh, that extended position is now, when really it's there. So you can see the idea, and, and, and every step of the way in a troublesome phrase like this, we're aiming for at least four out of five or 80% correct playings to incorrect playings. Once we've made that mistake, now when you start practicing a piece, of course, we're probably not gonna go at, um, at, at really slow speed, yeah? We kinda wanna get into it and just test the water and see what happens. Aha, so I did all of that right, that was good, because of that mistake work I just made, and then I, ruined the the B at the end so there's another area but you, you see and uh, so when you start playing a piece you don't have to think I've got to make only one mistake out of every five plays but once you make the mistake this is the method that I think works really well um, I'm going to take a little break from speaking and uh, just uh, look at your chats um, if you have any questions ask them now see me bigger um, so 
Prashanti says, hello, sir, how are you? I'm I'm well, yeah, I'm good. It's sunny. Um, I've had a nice uh, couple of days doing a lot of, lot of work, which is always enjoyable for me. Um, hi, Simon Harwood. Um, he says, hi, Joseph. Hello again. Nice to see you. And ah, and Potterhead says, I quite struggle with the hammer-ons in the end of the last line. Any tips? Let's look at that very briefly, okay? Um, so this is hammer-ons with the full finger, Potter. What what is it that you find difficult about them? Is it is it the, the uh, getting the hammer on to be loud enough? Is it letting the hammer on be accurate enough? Um, is it the timing of it? Because all of these types of mistake need different treatment. Um, Once you're, whilst you're kind of taking time to respond, um, I'll play again this phrase. Now, you know that that was that was a nice run for me, and I felt like the I've clearly in my mind I've stopped this error of my thinking of overextending early with the left hand. Um, <laughs> Potterhead, I'm able to hit it hard enough, but it just squeaks away. <laughs> okay, uh, I mean, uh, so you know, hammer-ons, especially on the first string, they're not the most pleasant of sounds at the best of times. I remember getting um, uh, really, really ripped apart by Martin Diller in a masterclass. For there's a saw piece, um, the Fantasy Elegiac, which is gorgeous. Uh, gorgeous piece and there's a whole section in it where um, you, you're playing just left hand hammer-ons I can't remember how it goes um, anyway <laughs> he said uh, and I gave this wonderful idea of how it sounds like it sounds like um, kind of horns distant horns on a battlefield somewhere these distant sounds and then Marchin said something like it just sounds really rubbish to me. Um, I don't like it. I wouldn't do it. And you know, I was like, oh, okay, no, I get your point. It, this sound is a bit naff. Um, now we can always work on improving the, the tone of these hammer-ons by making sure that the right part of the finger is is hitting the um, is hitting the string, not the flat part, but something more angled. Um, and, and the, the speed at which we execute as well can impact the tone. But ultimately, if you're slowing this down and playing this slow like we're meant to do in this practice, it's not gonna sound great. But think when you're playing it fast, it doesn't, you know, it's over in a flash. And I don't, I don't think we should obsess about the sound of these hammer-ons too much. And we can make them gestural, you know, we can, we can... Uh, <laughs> mm, right, I made a mistake, so I need to slow down there, don't I? Okay. Maybe the whole thing needs just a lighter touch for, for that, that phrase to be executed well. Um, yeah, Nick... Hobdell says a similar thing. Um, for me, it is definitely a question of making the hammer-ons loud. What is the... Can, can someone tell me what the what the kind of point of a slur is for them? There's not one right answer, but what, what what's the point of a hammer-on? Why do, why do they exist? And why does a pull-off exist? Um, uh, answers below, please. There's a thing I'll we'll talk about a bit later as well. How, if, if if you do this enough, and if you get used to slowing down enough to to eliminate these mistakes, you can see them coming. You can feel them coming. Ha! <laughs> Couldn't there? 
but I, I can I know that this here is going to cause problems and is is risky. And so in practice, we can slow down into that in order to avoid the mistake entirely. I, I also believe that mistakes, um, once we play them, they're there. They're like a, we've planted a seed in the garden of our practice and it's not going to go away unless we get the the spade and dig it out and destroy it. So if you can stop mistakes happening before they even happen, we don't even give that mistake a chance to take root in its mind, in, in, in our minds. There's something, um, I think, part of the brain learns mistakes as if they are um, normal notes. Something in our body learns them, and we have to eliminate that. Um, so, yeah... Uh, no, any, any, anyone, any ideas about uh, how, what, what slurs are for, what hammers on, hammer ons and pull offs are for? Um, I like to think that they come from mimicking the human voice, right? So, say if we're singing, um, ya, ya, da, 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 ya, da, 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 da. Now, if a singer was vocalizing that, Really, what feels more natural to me is da ya da ya da ya da la da ya da ya, or a soft second note of each pair. Da ya da ya da ya, and that's what hammer-ons and pull-offs do. That, that's the effect they give us. They mimic the human voice, and they're meant to be softer. I think. Sure, they enable us to play really fast if you've got loads of hammer-ons. You know, I can't, I can't do that anywhere near as easily if, I, if I'm not doing hammer-ons and pull-offs. But the, their ultimate um, expression is the note you pluck is, is accented, is louder normally on the beat, and the note that you pull off to or hammer-on to is meant to be weaker. So we try to go. <laughs> it, it, def, it kind of goes against what the nature of these should be. They should be soft. Now maybe when you're playing, Nick, they're not as loud as that. But even if it's, you know, Even if it's softer, you could experiment with bringing the pluck note down as well so that the whole line achieves an equilibrium. And remember that the faster you go, the less you're going to worry and get hung up about the sound of the, the hammer or the pull-off. So, um, yeah, Patricia, slurs can help the flow of a passage. Totally. Making them polka-like and danceable too. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Potter, that's cool. Um, so... Yeah, that's that's a bit on kind of slurs and uh, hammer-ons and pull-offs. They don't need to be loud. That, that goes against the nature of what they're about. Um, and and likewise, I'm going out on a limb here, but I I remember being told once by a wonderful teacher that if we think about the nature of slurs, how it's about the note that you pluck is accented, then the note that you're pulling off or hammering onto is meant to be less. Why can't we just imitate that by plucking them? So, yeah, that's quite hard to do. But it could be done on this piece. <laughs> okay. Now nah, I'm doing it the wrong way. You know, maybe this piece is a, isn't a great example of that, but there are many, many slurs that you see in music that you can achieve the same effect by plucking. And I don't think that's wrong because, the, again, the ultimate effect of a slur is that the accent note, the pluck note, is kind of louder or more, there's more emphasis on it than the, than the slur note. Um, Simon says, uh, hammer-ons create flow and also ornamentation. Yeah. Um... But what's all ornamentation about? The plot thickens. Okay. <clears throat> so, this method then, as I said, you isolate the mistake, you play it enough times that 
it, um, you've got 80% correct. Um, and then you can slowly expand by playing faster or expanding the length of the phrase. And this is the way to practice, I think, uh, um, at every piece you play. I'd love for you watching to, to start a new piece or, 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 or rekindle an old one and try this from the very start where, so in a way, in doing this method, you're going to make so much less mistakes than before, I think. Um, and that translates into like a, a, a strong, solid oak tree. Yeah, the roots are deep. So this piece, uh, when you when you play a piece in this way, it it really really helps make it stronger for all your practice, but then also for, for performances. And what I found before was that when I didn't do this, when I was a bit more relaxed with mistakes, um, the the what would happen is that the piece would be okay. I'd get it to a good level in practice and then suddenly under pressure, any sort of stress, I'd cave because all those mistakes that I made rear their ugly head when you are under pressure. And so not allowing them to 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 take root in the first place is the best way I think. Um, and once you've established that method of practice, then you can break it. Then you can do. Um, if you look at number six, yeah, this software isn't great. There we go. Now that you've established a default practice mode with very few mistakes ever being made, oh, can't. Sorry, you can't see it, can you? Let's do that. Let's do this. One day. One day I'll be slick. Hello. <laughs> so um, you can then program in practice that involves risk taking and going going extremely fast or extremely expression or, or taking the whole piece and just going for it, knowing that like the, the majority of your practice will will weed out all these mistakes that you might make there. So th these rules are then meant to be broken as well. Here I am again. There we go. Um, it's worth, like, uh, it would be lovely, yeah, as I said, you should read the study. Um, I know studies are quite, um, can be quite dry and boring, but this one is fantastic. And basically, in this study, they they took um, a number of pianists studying at Conservatoire um, and looked at the practice habits for, for the pianists that played um, a short excerpt that they just learnt in the room under, uh, under the conditions of the study. And they found a few... Um, common trends about the people that played it best. Um, and it's just, it's really fascinating um, the the kind of ideas that came up. Um, you can see there's a list on the, uh, on like the, I can't remember what page it is. It says 317, a uh, list of points from A to K that are kind of good practice techniques. So for pianists, um, Playing was hands together early in practice. Now that, of course, is like um, we, we don't really have a similar thing in guitar. Um, you can you can kind of say you can play melody on its own and then add the accompaniment in, but it's not really the same. Um, practice was was thoughtful, as evidenced by silent pauses, silent pauses, um, and. A really important one, errors were preempted by stopping in anticipation of mistakes. Um, that's what I was talking about earlier. Following on from that, errors were, were addressed immediately when they appeared. They weren't ignored because then that's how we get into problems. Um, tempo of individual performance trials was varied systematically. Logically understandable changes in tempo occurred between trials, so, so you know, slowing down. Um, when tempo was changed, the first trial at the new tempo was nearly always accurate. Um, yeah, really, really fascinating. And going on from there, let's see if I can find it. <laughs> An extremely important point, the effective handling of error correction led to a higher proportion of correct and complete performance trials during practice. So handling errors is the, the most important thing you can do in practice, I think. Uh, 
one last thing there. So again, it says this, the two of the top ranked pianists made alterations in their performance tempos that preempted errors before they occurred. Um, so this idea that we can, we can stop before we make the error. I'm gonna play a bit more now because I've talked a lot, um, as is always the case <laughs> in these things. And I'm gonna do this, uh, I'm gonna do this, this uh, rule, okay? I'm gonna play with this method. Okay, first mistake. So. I notice I didn't isolate that tiny little bit. I played from the start again because I knew I could slow down into that note, okay? That's another way to do it. Once you see the mistake coming, once you see the area where there was a problem, we slow down into it. see a problem so don't let it happen. Is that going to be a right hand harmonic there or a left? Who knows? Um, do that again. There we go. Ah, I wasn't happy with that. I missed a, that was a right hand mistake there. Now, also, how do you define a mistake? That's another important issue here, because I could be playing this with different right hand, plucking hand fingerings every time, and that is a big error in my books. So uh, you can also cl classify your errors and choose what is an error or not. Um, and that can vary every time you practice. For instance, it could be, and you could call an error, I didn't play with the right dynamic there, or I didn't play with the right phrasing and rubato that I wanted. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you can omit the problems in note squeaks and, and errors, which is only one type of error and a very minor one, and approach it from an expression point of view. So I'll try that now. I'm gonna, for, if I make mistakes, it doesn't really matter because I'm now thinking about dynamics. That's my main thing, okay? <laughs> Playing, but at least I'm now thinking about the dynamics and that side of things. that all down because I didn't want to make a mistake. Now I'm, because I'm on a new section, I'm thinking more about note accuracy, okay? Um, questions about this or, or any any kind of opinions about this this method I'd love to hear your thoughts um, do you do this sort of thing do you react to mistakes in this way um, and yeah just want to, I'd love to hear your comments I'll read a few out now um, thank you underground vision for saying great teacher that's very kind um, and you also ask can you talk about Trinity College grade 8 and how we can get good marks Mm. Um, it's uh, that's such a broad topic it's very hard for me to know what will be best for you and it will be different for every person I tell you what like the, in relation to this 
the important part is when you start your pieces, if you haven't already, or if you're even midway through learning them, stop and start again with this practice method. Um, get everything comfortable and mistake free as much as you can. Um, I d like I do remember saying in a previous video or live stream how in in terms of grades, I think people often concentrate on the little errors like you know that thing. Now for me that if that's just if I, if I heard someone do that, but everything else was in check, if I heard even lots of little mistakes like that, but dynamics were there, tone was there, rhythm was there, I, I would probably mark them far better than a very clean guitarist that played all the right notes in all the right places, but without balance, phrasing, dynamics, etc. So, you know, focus on the musical side of things. I think that's important. Um, Whilst I'm here, it's worth checking um, with everyone who saw the last live stream about the right hand exercises, the plucking hand exercises. How did everyone get on with that? Did was this was this worthwhile? I'd love to hear questions about um, about the, the the plucking hand technique. <laughs> Do some more of the piece. Um. Mm. Now I'm repeating the session partly to, to work out what the plucking hand would be like. Um, I'm, I'm currently playing it, I'm pretty sure M I M I. M I M I A, but got to check. Is cool. This is interesting in terms of what I was saying last time about the plucking hand. Um, this, looking at this in terms of string changes, so going from the fourth string to the third string here, and third string to the second string there. If you caught that, um, then uh, that that live stream last time, then it's always best to approach a string change from the, say the index finger to the middle finger going down or middle finger to ring index to ring always in this direction never in the other direction now we that's always the, what we're what we're aiming for and in this case that works perfectly i to m there i to m that's why i would start this with m not i and then later on you see, because of that, and because we need to keep alternating, we can't repeat a finger, it's too fast, um, then we do have an, a, a problematic change there. Now, one in a phrase is fine, but it's worth thinking about and practicing that even more. These are the kind of things that I would w watch and be wary of. And again, we, 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 we are able to log this in our minds with the slow practice where we're, where we're going over these mistakes with a kind of fine tooth comb, okay? So there, you can see if you're looking at my right hand, um, I'm going M on the third string, I on the second string. Now we have to do that time and time again in guitar, but be careful about it because it's hard. Um, and then I'm I'm playing the A finger on on the on the melody there because I think I'm I'm going to probably play it quite a lot now, the A finger. Um, yeah. I'd actually play IMA on those chords. 
pools as well, not bring the sun, not bring the sum up. Nick Hopdale says, my teacher differentiates between practice and playing. And playing, she's very keen that I keep going through any mistakes. Yeah, 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 totally, totally. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, it, that's, yes, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So this is a practice method. This isn't, um, it, this isn't really recommended that much, like, at the later stages, when you really want to be performing this piece and ignoring mistakes to get the flow going. This is definitely, like, predominantly early stage practice in a piece. Early all the way through, even, even when you, you've got the piece ready for concerts, still doing this really, really helps. And, and playing with uh, this slowness and thought really, really helps at every step of the way. But you're completely right, Nick. Like uh, you, you have to differentiate between good practice techniques and good techniques for, for getting the performance ready. Because if you keep stopping, then that in itself you can class that as a mistake if, if what you want to do is play through a whole piece of music okay um you then go on to say the trouble is that i find that trying to deal with a single error can set off a cascade of errors in my head yeah yeah but but this happens i think because we haven't gone through in this systematic way and, and i totally get what you mean there is this weird thing that happens when you su suddenly start addressing mistakes properly they all start ganging up. They all, they like form a gang. They're like, right, this punk thinks they can eliminate us. Um, and you've got you to gotta fight them. You've got to battle them. This is, this is a battle. And, and, and you've got to respect the peace and battle it and kill these mistakes. <laughs> okay. Um, and and uh, going on to that point I mentioned at the beginning about it's how we react to mistakes. That's that's the important thing. Um, it, this is so true. Like, once that cascade happens and we start making mistake after mistake, that's when we lead to, you know, the thumbnail thing. Smashing your guitar, uh, giving up, like stopping practice, getting f furious and frustrated. That is only an error in our judgment. Like, it, it all we just... You you can just like you can choose to make mistakes in my book. You can choose your reaction to them, and we have to let them go. We have to be okay with them, and then and then and then kill them, <laughs> destroy them. Okay. Um, so so Nick, my advice to you is work through it. When you get that cascade of of, of errors, welcome welcome it in and say hello, mistakes. Nice to meet you now die okay and then you can fix it <laughs> um roger cooper this approach definitely makes sense but sometimes if you are limited for time and squeezing in just a few minutes practice it's sometimes tempting to pl just plow on through it is and i appreciate that ever more um with a you know a very busy life and kids and all that stuff that gets in the way that means you can't really do more than you know 10 minutes at a time but uh, and uh, the only response I say there, the only thing that's good about that is that ultimately we're here to enjoy our instrument, aren't we? We're here, we're here to enjoy music. Um, there's no greater point to playing than us enjoying and the audience enjoying it. So doing this too much, if that starts to lead to kind of like, to, you know, sadness, then we have to make a choice. Do we do that? Do we carry on or do we just plow, you know, play for enjoyment? That's the only way I'd say that this um, method needs looking at and maybe not following all the time. But it is rewarding. It's so rewarding when you can kill mistakes dead from the beginning of learning a piece and then you come to perform it and it will be better, I promise you. Um, yeah, I'd love to set up a little trial. I'll talk about that later, actually. Um, Simon Howard says, the plucking hand exercises are, for me, a work in progress, but have made me much more aware of which right hand fingers I'm using. Fantastic, because that's the point. That's the, the important point about playing. Um, 
with the plucking hand. We have to know what we're doing with it. We have to treat it with respect. Cool. Um, again, I, I'm going to just browse through my notes now. Um, ask me more questions um, if you have any. Um, I think... Let's find my folder. Um, yeah, I think I made my point about this about about this practice. So to sum it all up, like if you're trying this method out, play as you normally would. When you encounter a mistake, you stop. You stop immediately. You be silent. You don't react. You don't, you know, get frustrated. Um, you're allowed. You allowed that mistake to happen, and you will fix it. You isolate the mistake. You find a way to play just that little area very slowly. It's always slower than you think. Again, whenever I ask, tell my students to do this, they always play at roughly the same speed. Don't go slow. Um, and and once you've got that eighty twenty rule done and you've got your five good plays through, some, you know whatever, then you can start to speed up or take on more of the phrase. Um, and it, it, that's that's really it. Um, that, that's what this live stream is about. I hope that makes sense. Um, whilst you're kind of asking a few more questions, um, I'll play one more little bit of this piece. Um, and then uh, I will talk about my plans for later this year and um, uh, discounted lessons in October half term. So stay tuned. Um, <laughs> That's really interesting that I, that did not, I, I felt completely fine with doing that phrase now. <laughs> he says. Um, it felt really nice in that run. The other, the other run here didn't, and I haven't practiced that as much. I also haven't worked out what I'm doing in the right hand. Experimented with different ideas here, whether to whether to bar or not. I like this, not barring. I think the other thing about this is that the 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 ongoing task of you as a as someone learning guitar, as it is with me and everyone, is we've got to work out why we're making mistakes and what that is. And that is an incredibly complex process. And that is the art of kind of learning an instrument really well, is knowing what you don't know, yeah, or finding out what you don't know. Um, and this is what we need teachers for. Like classical guitar, you do need a teacher every now and then. I need a teacher. I wish I could have some lessons with um, some great teachers because I need them. Like there are things that I, that there are many things that I struggle with and can't fix, and and so at least with this method, we 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 have the time to entertain ideas about what the errors might be. Okay, um, uh, the more time you have to focus on mistakes, the more you look at them, the more likely you are to find out what the problems are, and. In this method too, you're going over the mistake so much that you'll remember it for your teacher next time and ask them, look, I can't, this phrase is, is not cool. And sometimes you'll come across practice like this where you'll do this method and it just won't work. They'll, they'll, you'll, you'll play it lovely and slow five times, blah, 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 and then you get faster or you try the whole thing again and it just doesn't work. And then it's worth consulting a teacher or, you know, trying your hardest to find out what the problem might be yourself. But... You know, we need we need external help. <clears throat> cool.
Connor McCarthy, hello, uh, says, I've just started a degree in music education and one of my exams includes classical guitar performance. I'm currently at grade six. How many hours should I be practicing each day? Um, how much time have you got? At, like, how much could you fit in? Um, I mean, if you were doing like a conservatoire degree, then, you know, three, four hours plus is great. But if it's a degree in music ed education, so I assume that's a bit more, um, it's got academic size and there's lots of other work you're doing. Um, then, yeah, an hour, I'd probably say. <laughs> the title of this study, the study that I uh, have put in the link, I'll, I'll put it again for you. Just one second. Camera meltdown. Um, yeah, that study is, is called, it's not how much, it's how, right? And that's super important. We're back, hopefully. Um, yeah, it's it, it's not how much you practice, it's what you do with your time. Um, so whatever time you have, make it make it good. Make it the best quality you possibly can by doing things like this. Um, I, I would also say, Connor, you should check with um, the course guidelines and see what kind of level you should be playing at and how much how much repertoire you have to play, how long the concert is and when, because that will all inform your decision of how much you're practising. Um, yeah, let me know. Potterhead says, how do you deal with accents, especially in sections of the forte? How do you differentiate between accented notes and normals? Um, okay, let's look at this piece here, accents. Galore. Um. Sounded weird. Oh yeah, it starts on that top bit there, uh, the end of the top line there. Okay, it's forte. Um, but whatever your whatever your range of dynamic is for you, and it's different for every player, that's what you have to work with. And we don't want to be going because I'm making a mess of the guitar sound, yeah? So on this piece, say I'm going from... Um, notice how I'm really making those, those chords there a lot softer than what I would call forte. Now the, the effect is still forte, the effect is still... Ah, this is big, yeah? Big and gutsy. Um, so, how do you do accents? Lower everything around it can help. Um, you also need to look at how you're producing the sound, and this is a, a very technical thing with a plucking hand. Um, maybe we can look at that in our lesson next. But you see what I mean? Like, as long as you have power for the accent, See, again here, it's got forte and then um, by the double bar and then in the next line, it's got crescendo and then even more. Now, are you going to play that louder? No, not likely. Especially because it's, it's you're on the third string. That's For me, that's weaker than the fourth string. So maybe here we die back on the chord. And then bring it back up. Yeah. So even though it says forte and then get louder from there, doesn't mean we haven't gone down to get the start of that crescendo less so that we can build again. Dynamics is such a rough guideline. Like there's there's so much more to dynamics than forte every eight bars and then piano and all that. Um, Cool, I'm gonna wrap it up quite soon um, and I will reveal the um, the discounts on Zoom and a few other things in a bit. Just gonna answer your questions. So again, if you have any questions, please let me know now. Um, if I can't answer them now, I'll save them for next time. Um, 
Uh, Code Works is a very beautiful piece. It's advanced level for me, but it's helpful. Cool. Glad to hear. WCCWI, catchy name, says, Thanks for the lesson. Really helpful to think about mistakes as I'm grade two Trinity. Yeah, my teacher also asks me to focus on phrasing and musicality when pressing. Stunning. Good stuff. Um, try this method out, WC. Get, uh, get the, the notes. Let me put them all in the link again. So, first do the study. Very, very good study. Very important. Um, next, we've got the files for the lesson and that PDF. Okay, there we go. And lastly, we got, ah, yes. <laughs> If you'd like to join my mailing list, I'm setting up a mailing list um, because I don't have one and that's that's stupid. What if I got banned from YouTube tomorrow? Um, so if you'd like um, to receive occasional emails from me with kind of lesson notes and promotions for, you know, discounted lessons, that kind of thing, there's where to join up. Um, um, right. Potterhead asks again, is volume variation the only way to accent? Ah, oh, very good. No, it's not. Fantastic, fantastic. Exactly, an accent an accent doesn't have to mean volume. You can take the liberty of thinking, how am I making this stick out? So. Just by varying the timbre of that. I'm, okay, I'm varying the volume too, but at least if, if you're finding trouble with just volume, you can add uh, something like Pont or Tasto. Also, <laughs> okay, not on this. Okay, that sounds, that sounds, I would never do that on this piece, but you, you can change the length of a note, right? Now, I know it says you shouldn't staccato that note, it doesn't say there's a staccato on that, but that can help too. Or a semi-staccato. Okay, so there are ways to do it and totally go for it. What, what, what sounds good to you, you know, that's, that's the thing. Um, Moonlight Fairy says, Hi, I'm doing my guitar grade five currently while doing GCSEs. How do I fit my guitar practice into my routine? So I have a lot of exams to realize for. Oh, yeah. Um, that's really, really difficult, Moonlight. Like, whether it's GCSEs, A levels, degrees, or just life, whatever, how do you fit in the time to practice? Um, you, like, it's again. It's a very good viewpoint to think. I. It's not that you physically cannot fit in time to practice because there are very few people in the world that don't have time to do something. You just got to think. Do, what's what's my priority? Like, are there, is there anything else in my life that I can cut down the time for, that won't negatively impact me too much, so that I have time to play guitar. Um, Think you know you often we collapse in the evenings and watch TV for an hour or two because we want to and that's cool. But if you want to practice guitar, then perhaps experiment with cutting down TV time. Or um, uh, I'm a big advocate of going to bed early and getting up early, um, so that can help too. Rise early, do your practice at the start. If, if you're an early bird like me, that helps. Um, the other thing you can do is have the guitar there as you're, as you're revising. Because you can't sit and revise solidly for an hour and get the best results. You know, you need little breaks. So why not do 20 minutes of solid revision and then five minutes of guitar? 
20 minutes, five, you'll actually benefit on both sides, cutting down the, the kind of length of block that you do. Okay, thanks for listening. I hope that was helpful. Um, I will do a video on this, on the mistakes thing, because I think I could explain this all better if I have planning <laughs> and, and time and editing and all of that. Um, so, few last things to say. Um, join on the mailing list if you want. It'd be really helpful. The um, in October, so I have a half term from schools. I actually have two weeks half term, so I won't be teaching, doing so much teaching at schools. From the 18th to the 27th of October, um, I've got a fair amount of free time, especially Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays. Um, so if you are free, um, daytime or evenings, UK time, from the 18th to the 27th of October, and you fancy um, a lesson over Zoom, uh, then I'm giving out a discount to anyone um, in the stream. Um, of £30 an hour, that's a discount, um, from my normal rate of £40 an hour. So um, for that, you get the whole lesson recorded if you want uh, and given back to you. You'll get practice notes and hopefully I can help you with whatever you are working on, no matter what stage you're at. So if you are interested in um, you know, a, a discount of £30 for an hour lesson at some point in that half term, get in touch. Um, you can email me. Uh, I'll put my email in the chat now. Hopefully, I'll get spammed by spammers. Um, and then also, uh, there's a very. Uh, I've still got to think about how I'm going to do this a lot. But I next year I will be starting to do big releases on courses, on course material online. They won't be free. They will be charged, uh, but they'll be excellent value for money. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going through the process of thinking about what I'm going to do for that. For that reason, I would love to develop a, a community of you people watching now, like my kind of really good, hardcore kind of uh, YouTube followers. And thank you so much for watching this and for all your engagement in this. It gives me the kind of semi-belief that I can make a... Um, a sizable part of my career be YouTube to deliver this kind of stuff and better um, in the future. I would love for you to be part of the process of me building course material. Again, I'm not sure what that will mean right now, but if you are interested, then I will host some Zoom masterclasses um, around December, maybe in the Christmas holidays, um, and then into January, February. Uh, I'm limiting it to, uh, I think, 30 places. So if you are interested, let me know. Um, it'll either be free or it'll be a small charge for the class um, as I've got to find a way to, to kind of make up some <laughs> income from all these hours I'm spending. So we'll see about that. But if you're interested, again, drop me an email. Um, I'll, there'll be more information soon. But yeah, my idea is to have a kind of two hour masterclass on Zoom with 20, 30 people, or however many can, can come. And uh, you can all play, we can all meet each other, we can start a, uh, a Discord server, something like that, so that you can be part of, hopefully, future course content to which you will be heavily discounted. So that is, um, that is my offer, just let me know. Um, thanks everybody, thank you so much. Last comments, um, thank you Single Malt, uh, thanks for sharing your knowledge. Uh, thank you. Um, Simon, thanks again. You're always here. Thank you so much. Moonlight Fairy, thank you very much for your advice. You're welcome. Cadworks, thank you so much for sharing the knowledge. Um, try to make it online so it would be nice to, to interact. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you, Nick. Do you have a plan of Patreon? I, uh, it's, it's, it's something I'm considering. I'm... Yes, possibly. Um... I, 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 this is the year of, uh, this in 2022 will be me working out what I'm going to do. And my main thing right now is that I'm going to be launching big courses in 2022. Um, I do 
my, my goal is to release the most comprehensive course on plucking hand technique available on the internet. Now, it's a bold claim. Whether I'll get there or not is another thing, but that is my goal. And if that works, then I won't need a Patreon. If I can get course delivery that reaches a, a mass market, then that will keep me going. And then I'll be able to invest more time into all of this. Because right now I work between 40 and 60 hours a week and then the YouTube on top. Um, it's so I can't dedicate much time. I want to dedicate more time. This is that's you know one way I can do that. Um, cool. Thank you. Right, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna do the risky thing, which is playing through Rosita as fast. Well, not as fast as I can, but like I'm gonna be really bold now. I'm gonna I'm gonna make as many mistakes as I want. Okay, so I'll play you out with a mistake full Rosita. <laughs> There's one thing about this piece, that that first note is a crotchet, sometimes we play it as a quaver. I'm guilty of that, we're all guilty of that. interesting doing that it's really really interesting because then it it reveals areas that still need work okay cool thank you very much everybody um have a lovely weekend uh so join the mailing list like and subscribe please that really helps out email me if you're interested in uh zoom lessons at discount over october and email me as well if you're interested in this um master class idea um where you can become part of the community that helps me build courses for everyone. Okay, um, thank you everybody and au revoir.